and, and also the way the header tank is done right now is crazy. In the field of engineering, the first manufactured prototype always looks rough. Suppose you've seen the various versions of SpaceX Starship, you will notice that SpaceX engineers gradually advanced a Starship that looks incredibly rough to much more sophisticated model with smoother metal walls and welds that are less noticeable. The welded joints look shinier and smoother than the rough, ugly surface finishing they've been manufacturing before. So how did the Starship improve from looking like an ugly masquerade to a well-detailed smooth surface? Stick to the end of this video as we answer this question and we'll also discuss why the Starship was rough in the first place. To answer this question, well, you will agree that the Starship is the first structure that looks this tall and cylindrical, about 390 feet tall, having a nose cone up in the sky. The first welders who fabricated the first prototypes of Starships that looked rough were welders that worked as reservoir welders in oil companies and water tanks. SpaceX had to recruit these guys to work on the Starship fast. Like the saying, if you mean to start something good, don't think much about it, rather do it. So, the first Starship prototype was fabricated by non-experienced welders when it comes to cylindrical skyscraper-like structures. So, they may not have gotten any first-hand knowledge required to work on tall, hollow and wide structures like this. But what exactly is welding and why is it so difficult to get it right? According to Webster's Dictionary, welding can be defined as fusing two metals with a hot torch. Thus, what did SpaceX do to change the game of rough surface welding into something smooth? A welding technique known as flux core was utilized in the construction of the early Starship prototypes. This technique involves sending a voltage through a wire made of metal, which results in the formation of an arc between the wire and the metal, forcing the metal to melt. The end of the metallic wire also melts and falls into the stainless steel that has become molten, which fills in any cracks or gaps that may have been visible. When using flux core welding, the metal wire is wrapped in a solid material that, upon combustion, produces a shielding gas around the weld joint. This shields the weld and prevents it from reacting with the oxygen in the surrounding, which could potentially cause it to fail. Each stainless steel ring is fabricated from a single, much thinner sheet. Thin sheets like this will reduce the high melting point of the steel during the weld. Hence, the engineers switched from stainless steel type 301 to stainless steel type 304L, which is also more resistant to sudden brittleness during the welding process. Again, SpaceX welders also upgraded to tip-tig welding, which aids them with greater control over the welding arc. This enabled the welders to tighten the arc and weld much deeper into the metal than when the previous welding method was used. More so, SpaceX discovered the importance of buying robotic welding machines from companies like Liberty and KUKA. With the help of robotic welding, SpaceX could automate the major challenging welding process and begin producing cleaner and more precise welds. SpaceX has likely switched to laser welding for many of the Starship's sections, because the heat generated by laser welding is more concentrated and penetrates the metal to a greater depth, it is possible to weld the ring segments in a single pass. However, another process needs to be completed to improve the strength of each weld. Again, the stainless steel that Starship uses in its manufacturing goes through a process known as cold rolling after being cut before it is welded into rings. The question is, what exactly is cold rolling? You see, cold rolling is done by moving the metal through a set of rollers, which compresses the metal structure and spreads out the grains that make up the metal. This operation makes the metal material more durable and robust. Also, after welding, the welded portion tends to become malleable due to the heat. So, the plashing machine will come into play by strengthening all welded joints to enhance strength. In the process of plashing, the welds are pounded down and compressed using a hammer until they reach the same hardness level as the surrounding metal, after which the appearance of the welds will be improved and an additional smooth look will be noticed on the welded joints. To get the point straight, the job of SpaceX welders entails nothing more than using Class A equipment to weld, cut, trim, fit and fabricate metal components to the specified dimensions to build and assemble. But this may not be all the case. For the Starship, a good standard for surface finishing is always maintained. When planning welding operations in an area where procedural information is not available, it is necessary to analyze engineering drawings and specifications. And to accomplish this, you can't rely on inexperienced workers who don't know how to fabricate anything using metal sheets. 
That is why SpaceX has to train amateur engineers who are only good at welding oil reservoirs or metal water tanks and anchor them with professional welding skills to an advanced level. Most of these welders are retained as full-time staff in SpaceX today. Now, coming to what happened that made the Starship look rough and ugly on the first try. The rough and the bad look of the previous Starship was a result of improper fitting and bad techniques for controlling heat input. It should have been done with pulse MIG if done by hand. Ultimately, robotic pulse TIG or laser is the best method, having the heat arc more concentrated with a continuous weld. A welder can only go so far before having to reposition or change something on the machine when done by hand. SpaceX has a pretty good recent track record with your goofy prototypes. The Falcon Heavy stuck its first go, but rocket engineering is hard, and Starship is trying many new, untested technologies all at once. You'll be correct to call it a first-generation rocket. Everything about the Starship is an experiment. Nobody has ever tried anything like it before. It's groundbreaking in at least half a dozen basic technologies. Do you expect it to look like a finished work? Of course not. SpaceX isn't just building a Starship. They're making them in thousands, around 1,000 to 3,000 of them. So the rapid assembly process and the chances to spread these processes along a production line are sure to be considered. And that is a big factor in the material used in producing the Starship and rolling off the stainless steel into diameter rings and then robotically welding them to form long tubes without having to cut or bend the material is a very compelling way to easily mass-produce starships. Like you should one day take a stroll and see how it's being done at Boca Chica. There is one large tent where they just rolled out stainless steel as many times as possible. There is another area where they weld the rings into larger cylinders, and another where nose cones and hemispherical bulkheads are made, possibly by hand. Do you remember the manual fabrication thing? After deciding to switch to stainless steel, SpaceX started to see more benefits of the shiny stainless steel gifted nature. No need to paint it, stainless steel gets a lot stronger at cryogenic temperatures, which is fantastic news when you have liquid oxygen or methane at stupidly low temperatures exerting huge pressure on the structure. They can also friction stir weld the structure, which robots are good at. The melting point of the steel is higher than the temperature experienced during re-entry, so the structure won't lose any strength if any of the heat tiles fly off during re-entry. And without forgetting that stainless steel is incredibly cheap, it's a good cost-effective material, a goal very important to Elon Musk and SpaceX. That's reusability. The type of steel grades used in production of the Starship are also used for making kitchen utensils, such as pots and pans, so it's an easily available metal. If there were a better or a cheaper alternative, you'd expect SpaceX to have found and used it by now. But why not carbon fiber in the case of a commercial airplane? Now, think about this for a moment. Suppose SpaceX uses carbon fiber material and it works, it will save the quantity of fuel used to fire the Starship into orbit since the carbon fiber may be lighter than stainless steel metal. Why did SpaceX finally dump the carbon fiber, having used it for the Starship prototype? To answer this, let's take a look at the first case scenario of the Starship that utilized carbon fiber. Until it was discovered that carbon fiber was a poor choice for a vehicle that had to deal with temperature extremes ranging from negative 180 degrees Celsius to 1600 degrees Celsius, especially during multiple re-entries, the carbon fiber could not withstand high temperatures like this. Even though the original BFR concept used carbon fiber as the basic construction material, yet it was later abandoned. You'd need pretty thorough insulation and heat shielding system to account for this if you want this composite to survive at high temperatures, above a thousand degrees Celsius. Contrarily, stainless steel is quite content in a much wider temperature range, is stronger at cryogenic temperatures and crucially retains a good amount of strength even at a high temperature of a thousand degrees Celsius and above. This significantly lowers the need for insulation and a thicker heat shield. The price difference between stainless steel and carbon fiber, which can be used in a system that can be deemed more cost-effective, is another important consideration. Hope you learned a lot in today's video. When do you intend to visit the SpaceX factory at Boca Chica, Texas to see the Starship production process yourself? You can also take a look into SpaceX great improvements from Starship S20 to S24 that no one talks about. And that's insane.